Welcome in to Paydirt Sports. This is Will Dundon here with Nick Trushel and Seth Coggin. Paydirt Sports, part of the Six Pack Coverage Network. Let's kick it off, guys. Uh, first of all, how's the weekend? Trushel, you went to uh, your sister's basketball game, right? Yeah, I did. Uh, I went down there. It was actually during the Tennessee, or it was right before the Tennessee Auburn basketball game. Uh, tough loss down there, played number 11, North Georgia. Um, it, yeah, this team, this team won the conference, won the peach belt. So, I mean, we, we knew we were coming, uh, it was David versus Goliath, but unfortunately number 11 took care of business. Um, but definitely a bright future for South Carolina Aiken lady Pacers next year. We've got some big recruits coming in All right. Team really starting to gel. Um, I'm excited. No, next year, next year is going to be the big year for the lady Pacers. Heck hey, yeah. I'm a lady Pacer for life. That's been known. That's oh, yeah. been known about me. So that's awesome. We'll talk about there. that for sure. Yeah. Guys, I feel like the weekend for all of us was pretty awesome as far as sports goes. Yeah. I mean, hey, don't get much better. Being I will Kentucky, get, don't get much better. At Bud Walton, Thompson Bowling, dare I say, the two toughest places to play in the country. Right now, they're as hot. Of right they're now, hot right I mean, now. When, I mean, when the hogs and the balls are hot in basketball, those arenas can bump. I mean, yeah, balls I mean, they're continue. Huge. They're they're undefeated at home. Seth, what's I mean? I assume you lost record. one. We lost, lost one. one. I was yeah. I was there that night. We lost to Vanderbilt at home. Yeah, oh, that's okay. right. That was the last. See, that was like the last loss before we reeled off about nine. So we went. We lost to Vanderbilt at home. We were zero and three in the conference, and it was down bad. And everyone was off. Like everyone was out of the bandwagon. And I'm tell. I'll tell you. I got one. St- like this is this is the moment the season turned for me. All right, I was in Bud Walton Arena that night. It was a Tuesday night, Vanderbilt at home. And Vanderbilt hit a shot to go by about four or five with like 45, 50 seconds left. Like still, you know, a decent amount of time. But they hit a shot to go by about four, and people start leaving. People start leaving the gym. You know, under a minute left, they are kind of discouraged. Arkansas had played terrible. But it, I know it gets me fired up. Like I'm, I'm kind of chilling that game, you know. It's a Tuesday night hanging out. I brought some friends. And uh, in this, I'm like, what are y'all doing? Like, why are y'all leaving? This is basketball. Like, basketball is absolute madness. That's why we are. We're here in March. Basketball is madness. Like, it ain't over. That's all I could say. Like, I was so I was so distraught with our fan base that we were walking out, like, down four points. Like, it ain't over. It ain't over. Now, we did – we actually got a chance to tie the game on a free throw, missed it, and lost the game still. But it wasn't over. We still almost came back and won. Anyway, since then, it's been all up. Hogs are hot. Bud Walton is – was it was down bad that night, but it is up amazing right now. Like, people are going crazy. And you see it. I mean, not – you know, Tennessee is the same. Like, a basketball team gets hot around this time of year, and, like, people yeah, just people gravitate Yeah, people rally. People no, the fans right rally, rally around it. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It's, it's awesome. It's fun to watch. Dude, it's funny you say that about the Vandy game because I noticed that, too. Like, the average fans – just kind of ignorance when it comes to, like, late in-game basketball. I remember I was watching – I think it was the SEC tournament last year with some Alabama fans, and I think they were down six with, like, 30 seconds left, and they were like, oh, well, there it is. And I was like, what are you talking about? They can make a three foul and then make another three. And they were like, no. Like, (laughs) they thought I was, like, crazy. And then it happened. Bama ends up scoring six, going to overtime, and they were like, Will, you called it. I was like, well, that's – March, like that's, that's college basketball. basketball. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, I uh, I will say too, Trushel, you might you might be able to kind of add to this if you were able to watch kind of the end of that game. Tony Vitello, the baseball coach, yeah. talked about he talked about the we we can go into that kind of the baseball weekend too. But Tony B talked about the atmosphere as he got to sit courtside for that game against Auburn, and he even said that atmosphere was like on another level. Like he said he was at the Kentucky game earlier, not not too long ago when we beat them, when we upset them. He said that was crazy, but that Auburn atmosphere was better. And I I agree with them, man. That yeah, I, really I mean Thompson Bowler was rocking. I, I think it's been a few years since I've really seen Thompson bowling just I, I don't know how to describe it, but it was it was a different yeah. level of energy. It's hard to on. describe like when you get twenty thousand fans 
like popping in an arena. For, yeah, like, and they're all good. piled like, in there too. And, and it is the energy that true, like when it gets to that peak and it's truly packed out and it's truly max energy, it's like hard to describe that energy. It is it's just like next level like craziness. It's like mad it's true like madness in there. It's a madhouse. It's awesome. I feel like the only thing I could compare I I would honestly probably compare it to back in when was this? It was it was around like it was in the Bruce Pearl era around 08 to 10 when they beat uh kansas when they upset kansas oh yeah bowling. that was kind of another level and i would i put it up there with that honestly and i think part of it is because like we talked about the how the team is just kind of similar to arkansas too just kind of started climbing the mountain a little bit yeah, and they're yeah peaking all at the right time and it's like all that energy all that winning that whole attitude kind of meets at this moment when you get to play when a number three team comes into yeah. your house you know and you're you've got momentum already on your side and then you do the thing so yeah, I mean, that was and you sick. come out and win. That's the biggest part too. Like you have this huge buildup, and then you actually come out and like play good, come out and win, and compete at the high. Like that's truly the highest level because those are the best teams. I mean, they've earned those rankings. Those are some of the best teams in the country. Like to go go blow for blow with them, like and, and everyone's just going crazy. That's awesome. For sure, Dude, you got it now. That's you ain't seen very often where Arkansas and Tennessee were like you know, two of the biggest spotlights on a, on a true great college basketball Saturday. Like, yeah, it was in Knoxville and Fayetteville, that's awesome. That's so sick. And kind of, I, I guess, talking a little bit more about what happened Saturday, Will, we were talking about this before, but so one through six got upset. Um, or I guess not necessarily upset because, like, for example, Tennessee was a favorite against Auburn, but uh, numbers one through six in the rankings ended up losing – which is, I mean, that type of weekend is unheard of for just everybody on top of the mountain to be knocked off. Purdue losing to uh, unranked Michigan State. Um, who did Gonzaga? Did they lose to uh, yeah St. Saint Mary's. Mary's. Bad. They got beat yeah. by like twenty. Yeah. So Arkansas obviously gets a win over Kentucky. Auburn loses uh, to Tennessee. Kansas loses to number ten Baylor. Some uh, just, I mean, this is Madness amping us came up early for March. This year. Yeah, That's this like is amping really, us yeah. up for March. Like these, it is. these are the kind of crazy upsets that uh, gets everybody fired up about the and it's get, getting season. everybody believing that like they can win at all. Like there's so many teams right now. That are like I mean, look, the top six teams literally lost last week. Like no one's untouchable at all. Like it is, it is up for grabs. So like, why not us get hot and <laughs> win a few games? When yeah, games exactly. It matters. Well, and for example. I mean, Trisha, we've seen Tennessee beat Arizona, Kentucky, Auburn. Auburn. I mean, there's, yeah. Yeah. There's One few teams Tennessee. better than those three right yeah, there. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah. I think it was the fifth time ever six of top ten, of the top ten teams had lost on the same day. But it was the first time ever, I think, seven of the top ten teams lost on Saturday. Because it was, it was one through six, but then someone else in the top ten, I think, lost as well. It was the first time ever we'd seen seven top ten teams lose on the same day. Same day. And Which is kind of – I mean, think about it. It's actually very hard to do. Like that's Yeah. Just, yeah. Like the odds those. of that, it was like a $100 parlay would have won you thirty five grand if you picked the money line on all of them. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty crazy. But speaking of craziness, did you all see the Florida State-Virginia basketball game by chance? I did not. <laughs> I, did, I did not, yeah. So uh, it was insane. Basically, Virginia oh, I did. Nails, I saw yeah, last Virginia shot. Yeah, nails I know what you're game winner. Yeah, with 0. 0.3 seconds left or 0. 0.4, and Florida State pulls a Christian Leitner full court pass. Dude catches it, hucks it up, and it falls for the win um, with about 0. 0.3 seconds left. So I mean, even outside of the top ten here, we're seeing yeah. craziness across the board. Let's go! And it's so much more fun in March when your team is like in it in a competitor. Like when Arkansas is about to be, you know, a top decent seed, like it makes it so much more fun. The balls, you know, being being in the mix for for serious March Madness contention makes it all much more fun. So, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a chance that uh, Tennessee and Arkansas are both going to end up around that three, four seed. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like a lot of those teams kind of you can get a nice draw. Yeah. In that oh, spot. it's all about the matchups. Yeah, it's then, always like, matchups. Like. And then some underdog wins the game, and then all of a sudden you're playing like a – like last year Arkansas played a 15 seed to go to the Elite Eight. Like in the Sweet 16, we played a That's 15 That's so seed. nice. Yeah, 
Yeah, it was nice. Now they were good. Now they were really good. There was a reason they had beaten, you know, they, that means they upset a number two. And, yeah. You know, they had already won two games in that NCAA tournament. That means they're pretty dang good. But still, like the fact that you're playing a fifth, you're sitting there in the Sweet 16 and you could be facing a number one or number two and instead you're playing 15. So. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. It reminds me of that, uh, what was it, Loyola Chicago run yeah. uh, a few years back, Sister Jean. That, yeah. I mean, that in the, the teams that they beat, I think they played Nevada, like a, a nine seed in the Elite Eight to get to the Final Four. I don't think yeah. they played, like, <laughs> they, they they really got a good draw. I mean, that was a very good team, obviously, and they beat Tennessee. Sometimes and, it works out. That's how you got – it's got to work out in the tournament. Like, yeah. You've got to catch some good matchups. I'm going to be excited for it. So, yeah. Will, weren't you talking about uh, Joe Lenardi, his bracketology stuff? So, I think yeah, I, found I was it on, just on Twitter. Yeah, I, yeah, he had tweeted out. I was just looking at kind of who he had as his top seeds. I was thinking we could kind of talk about, I mean, no, no real surprises. Uh, probably the only one, the only ones you kind of have some of these, not bubble teams, but kind of bubble top four seed teams like Arkansas. He has as kind of one of the next to hop into that four spot, it looks like. Uh, Dude, which, they, what what I mean, more do you want from us? To be honest, like, like a top four seed's not asking to rank us a you know overall number one. Like, come on, show a little respect. But we'll see. We got more opportunities down. The yeah, stage. it it's kind of interesting though. I'm seeing that he has Baylor coming in at number four, and then Auburn actually being knocked out of that one seed spot. Yeah. Um, do you think Auburn kind of falls apart here at the end of the season, or do they right the ship and get it back going? Uh, I mean. I guess I think, obviously tournament play is going to yeah. conference tournament play is going to matter a lot. I think, I mean, if I think they, that's go ahead. I think if they hold on to win the SEC and then at least make it to the probably the championship game, I, I'll say that like win your first two games in the SEC tournament, then you'll probably be a one seed there. Like to win the SEC season in the way that they did would be very, very impressive. And they, they had a good non con too. So uh, I think they've definitely earned a one seed. I think they bounced back into that spot. Yeah, I think that's – I mean, the thing about all of these teams is there's so much opportunity for all of them. Like, our, I mean, Arkansas and Tennessee are going to play this weekend. Yeah. If Arkansas beats them, I would have to assume they're going to hop into those top four seeds, obviously, and Tennessee might drop a spot or something. Yeah. Same, same with Auburn. I think Auburn just showed a little weakness in that Tennessee game, relying too much on uh, – is it uh, Jabari Smith? Jabari Smith. Yeah, Jabari yeah. Smith. Just, he is a which, ball He's though. awesome. Yeah, right? he's, no, he's awesome. But it was kind of like it was you could you could really see it at the end of the game. It was because even I think Jimmy Dykes was when he was calling the game was talking about if anyone's shooting the ball besides him. Yeah, and Wendell Green Jr., their uh, point guard <laughs> off the bench was like hucking threes. Yeah. Dude, he was like so two for sixteen. Out. Yeah, the dude's a yeah. moron. Yeah. But I'm then you play also hero know, ball. It, I mean, if, like if Jabari goes cold. Like, cause I mean, he he's he is a six ten guard, so there's so many ways he can score. Yeah, but, you know, if you're especially if you're down and you need to start shooting threes, if he's not hitting, and you you yeah. don't have a lot of faith in a lot of other guys, I mean, that's just a glare. Someone's especially in the tournament come tournament time is going to be able to Locked take down. him away. Yeah, at some point there's going to be a that game. Wa that Walker Kessler, I mean, Auburn is good. That Walker Kessler. Oh yeah, yeah he's no slouch either. And then, but yeah, dude, they're. I I think Window Green or, are what, terrible. He does some stuff that's just astronomically not smart. Like that, Arkansas and Auburn were tied. We're tied with 25 seconds left, and he held the ball and just chucked up a 40 foot. Like it wasn't like they they didn't need a three. They could have gone for any other shot, and he just took like the worst three pointer I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, he did the and same with Tennessee. Those pull up, yeah, and Brick. But, but yeah. I guess I guess Bruce Bruce gives him the green light. I mean, yeah. he I mean when when the dude's on, he can score lights out. But I yeah. mean, he's that kind of guy. When he goes cold, he goes. Jabari real cold. Smith is tough to guard, though. That guy's incredible. I mean, he oh, really yeah. like I hadn't watched him a ton before, kind of SEC play, and then late SEC play, like the last kind of couple months. But man, he's he's tough to yeah. guard. I mean. I mean, he's shaping up he's to gonna be the be, number one pick. Yeah, he, I would, I would draft him number one. To be honest, like I've watched a lot of calls. I'm one. He fits the pro game so well too. Oh my gosh, he's, he is. I mean, he like you hate to make the comparison to Kevin Durant because like that's the only like 
long guard like freak athlete, kind of that size, good shooter. But he he does he moves like he moves like that. He shoots like the way he pulls up over people is like that's sick. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. what he I think he had seven threes against Vanderbilt this year. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, a bunch. I mean, he, the dude is long. huge, six ten. But uh, like you said, kind of p- plays that he's a little bit bigger than Kevin Durant, obviously 6'10", 220, but, uh, or at least when Kevin Durant first came out of college. But uh, he does have that shooting ability, driving uh, ability, and passing too. Like he's no, yeah. he definitely can see the court and he just does, he's good at just about everything that, yeah. that oh, well, the game of basketball has. I, I watched, it was in that Florida game, which Auburn messed around and lost. Like they really should have won that game. Yeah, that was bad. Uh, because, well, they were down, but then they came back and really had a chance to – and, you know, Wendell, <laughs> Wendell kind of screwed them in that one too. But anyway, I watched Jabari Smith make a play on the defensive end that, like, I've <laughs> he jumped so high in the air to, like, get a ball and throw it off somebody on an inbounds pass. Like, if that guy's defending on an inbounds pass, you're toast. Like, you're toast. That's – it's impossible to, to, to escape. It's just so long and so athletic. Fun to watch. Auburn's good. It'll be fun to watch. It'll be fun to watch them in the tournament when they're not in your league anymore. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't I'll root for Auburn, but definitely yeah, I, not. I actually don't like. I don't mind them having success. I, if Arkansas plays them, I want to beat the heck out of them. But, That'd be awesome. It'd be a good win. Tournament, go for it. But who, do you think, uh, who do you think will win the SEC tournament? Dude, I don't know. I, I mean, mean, it's kind of funny this year. Like, a lot of years there's not great – competition outside of like one team so it's either like the team everyone expects or it's just like a random underdog yeah mm-hmm. like i mean this kentucky year seems different. yeah auburn tennessee arkansas like we were talking about before we we started recording here really those top four seeds it's such or uh, the four double buy teams in the tournament it's such a big difference you play less games you're oh, rested yeah. you're fresh you come in I mean, well, it gives you a lot of confidence. Team regardless, you earned you earned the top. So you're not only well rested and everything. You also are the best four teams in the conference. You know, there's a pretty this year. It's a pretty big noticeable gap. It seems like between like the top four and then kind of everybody else is right. It's very good. they're good teams. You know, they're right around 500 in the league, which means like yeah. they're winning a lot, quite a few games. But it's just it seems like a tier. Like there's one one tier and. And Auburn and Kentucky kind of tried to, like, get out of – they tried to even Tennessee, be, like, a tier Arkansas, above yeah. Tennessee and Arkansas, but we've kind of drug them back down recently. Yeah, we like, pulled them back down in the dirt. Yeah, the vol- the yeah nasty like, Arkansas bases. beat Auburn and Kentucky, and then so is so Tennessee in the last month or so. So, uh, But I would say those four are definitely supreme over – or kind of the, the top, the cream, cream of the crop, if you will. Uh, Who's the other – so a- after them and then Alabama, there's one other – I mean, South Carolina's. Is it? People talk about LSU. I mean, oh, yeah. LSU might make LSU, probably. Yeah. Is, probably They've been so tournament. bad recently. But they're though. terrible. They yeah, are. They, they were so. They were really good at the beginning of the season, and then just have fallen apart completely. Will Wade just lost, lost control of that team. Yeah. I hate Will Wade. So that's yeah, fine. I can't stand Will Wade. So I got no problems. And Arkansas yeah. plays them Wednesday, so I think we'll take care of them pretty good. Hopefully. But you never know. SEC basketball is, is a lot better than it used to be. It used to be. Yeah. It used to be some garbage teams in the SEC. Like it, if it was like a Tuesday night at Mississippi State, it was just terrible. Dude, like, they, I was I was listening to guys talk about that earlier this week, and yeah, those kind of mid to late two thousands. Like yeah. Tennessee was good then when Pearl was yeah. running yeah. things, but it was. I mean, even like Kentucky was down. You know. Yeah, for Kentucky a while. had bad right before years. Uh, yeah. Calipari got there. Yeah. I mean, is he, and now, I mean, look at them now. You got, you know, six. Yeah. And I mean, but Florida right had now. a good run in there. Like, Florida won several national championships in there somewhere. Yeah. yeah in 05, uh, 06. So, like, there were, good, back back. there were good SEC teams every now and then, but like, nothing like the solid, you know, play that's going on. Definitely now. not it's as deep. Such elevated. It's deep. It's the depth of it, is really. That's definitely what it is. And I think that's honestly a trickle down from football, to be quite honest. Like, just money you know, being invested in it's athletics. It's just money. Yeah, it's truly just money. Like, uh, you throw enough money at a program in basketball and you're going to make it like it's going to succeed. Just notoriety, too, I feel like. 
Yeah. Just the fact that people even even just having notoriety from football and people just being so yeah. passionate Re- and recruited. talking so much I mean, about the SEC. Recruited. Yeah. Yeah. When SEC is known as the premier conference for a sport, like it just makes sense that it would kind of trick like trickle down to be, I don't know, it just benefits. Yeah. Like, they just kind of feed off of each other. So who would y'all say if you had to pick, say like take out kind of your fandom? If you had to pick a couple other teams that you think are going to go really deep, maybe end up in the – that you really like uh, going into March, who would you say? I mean, are we talking like across the board? Or are we only talking SEC? What are I'm we talking on? across the board. Like if you had to pick a couple teams to be like, hey, I think that's a Final Four team or a Natty team. Because I'm not going to ask for like a Final Four because obviously that's kind of – Yeah, it's a little tough yeah. right now. I think Texas is a little bit better than people think. Um, I don't know. I could just be a little biased because we lost to Texas, but I do think Texas is a little <laughs> bit better than, than we think. And they've obviously got Chris Beard, an experienced coach who has gotten a team to a national championship before. Um, and that's Texas Tech, who's ranked ahead of them right now. But I think a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of it comes with coaching experience um, just to elevate your players and get them ready to go for March. Cause that's the, that's the biggest thing. I think who is, who wants it more, who's ready for the moment, which players are going to step up when the, the number one guy, like we were talking about earlier, will is uh, locked up. I mean, that's going to happen when you're playing great teams, you're going to need second, third, fourth players stepping up here. I um, mean, I think a lot of that comes from coaching chemistry. So Texas is one team that I, I'd like to put up there. And then, Maybe one team that I want to drop a little bit that I think really isn't that good is Purdue, who just lost to Michigan State here. Okay. Um, I think Purdue is a a little overrated from their recent success in basketball. Uh, They're definitely still a top 25 team for sure. And I I, I could see them making a decent little run, but I think a lot of people – um, especially early on in the season, we're saying uh, – and Purdue was ranked number one at one point, weren't they, this I season? I think they were, didn't they? Yeah, is that, and they lost. Were they the ones who lost to Rutgers? Yeah, something meter? like that. Yeah, I think but, so. But, so, see, I think it's like losses like that, big moments that when Purdue gets their chance to show off that they're a really good team, like uh, against Michigan State here to, to finish up the season, they lose or they lose at the number one spot. So I think it's kind of the opposite effect of a team that – it won't be able to show up in those big moments. So I I think Purdue maybe is one of those teams that uh, gets bounced early um, in either the first or second round. I think they could be a a nice upset team to, to pick on. Yeah. It's funny you say that because I actually am going to go the other way and say, I think Purdue does does pretty well because here's, I mean, my only reasoning for this, I mean, Purdue is obviously a good team, but the fact that Purdue just continues to breed seven footers Having a seven footer in March, I feel like is just huge. Like especially a good Purdue has seven footer. Not yeah. not only not well, not even only just yeah, not only just good seven footers, but like yeah, like Eurosh, like Eurosh is like a lanky seven footer. Like Purdue's got like big seven footers, like Ivan Drago looking dudes, you know? Yeah. Coming huge. out like you do want to get those rebounds in March. I mean Yeah. I mean I think so I like Purdue, force. but but uh, a team I kinda I don't know, maybe I I, I just like them and they did they did pretty well last year. I'm going to go with UCLA. Shout out okay. to Tiger Campbell. Yeah, hey, CPA I'll, player. I was uh, I was going to say USC. Uh, okay. I'm liking the Trojans this year. My man, in Andy Enfield, uh, you know, a long way removed. It's been over nine years since uh, uh, what they call themselves, Dunk, Slam Dunk U or whatever, Gulf Coast, when they made their run. You remember oh, that? yeah, Florida Gulf Coast. What was that? What was their thing? What was the uh, – it was like dunk it, it was you some, or something. Yeah, it was dunk you because they were throwing a bunch of oops. Yeah, and they were just yeah. dunking over yeah. everyone. It wasn't anyway, like lob you or something, was it? Lob, no, nah, I don't know maybe, what it was. Something like that. So anyway, yeah, anyway, Andy Enfield Trojans. So USC, we're keeping it in Cali, but uh, as Bill Walton would say, the conference of champions. Yeah. So we're gonna go with USC making a deep run. Uh, I like. I honestly like Auburn in the tournament. I think they'll do pretty well. I think they'll make, like, the Elite Eight, but I think they will get beat. 
Kentucky's pretty good, but they're not. They're 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 good. They'll get washed early. Like I don't I don't 16. love Kentucky either. This no, like, I don't. I, I don't know what it is about them, but they just don't. That Shebway is a monster. He's he good. is so good. But I don't see much outside of that. They got. I mean, they got good guard. Like they do have good Ty players. Ty That's, Washington. Uh, yeah, He's and uh, that Wheeler guy did really good against us. Shaden uh, Sharp too. Yeah. Someone. Mm-hmm. Anyway, they are good, but I I see them losing. You know, I see them losing early. Um, I really don't know. Maybe maybe it's a year Arizona makes a good run. Um, yeah, I mean, they are a one seed as of right yeah, now. Yeah, they'll be a one seed. Like, it's not really – I don't know, maybe. We'll see how the Pac-12 does. I mean, I'm predicting uh, – like You Pac-12 said UCLA. So I said USC. Maybe – I predict Gonzaga will be back because, like, they got kind of clowned last year in the national championship. So, I kind of think that – They've just won a lot of tournament games recently, so I just figured yeah, keep, they've got so much good. experience. Yeah, so if I had to get my final four, it'd be Razorbacks, USC, Gonzaga, and Arizona. <laughs> I'm going West Coast and the Hogs. Nice. Well, something interesting I'll be looking at with some of these West Coast teams, like UCLA, hasn't really played in front of a crowd for most of the year. Which I find, yeah, I mean, it might it might not be anything, but mm, it definitely means in, in March. You know, yeah. you're not used to playing with a bunch of fans coming around. It's it'll be a different atmosphere. It's been a while. You might might take a little getting used to, especially right yeah. off the bat. No, I, I think it's been it's been weird, and I think uh, you can just look at the differences between, especially with like the NBA bubble. So looking at uh, like the Lakers, for example, who won the bubble championship. Um, they haven't made the playoffs with LeBron's four year, or three other years outside of that, or probably won't, including this year. So I think like the bubble and COVID and that year was a lot more of a dramatic change than I think uh, f- from a fan's perspective, we can see. Uh, I think coaching wise, experience wise, those young freshmen not being able to get on the court early. Uh, so I, I think the, the COVID thing could have had a really, really big effect. Um, and I think we'll, we'll learn to see the effect even more as we go on, um, as some of maybe the teams that got hot during the, the COVID era, we can call it, are falling off and teams like Kentucky or, uh, Duke that had down years during, uh, during some of these COVID years that now they're back up. So I, th- I think it was a pretty big difference. Fans make a, a big difference in places like Bud Walton, Thompson Bowling that get rocking. I mean, you got 20,000 people. I don't know if you all saw the uh, swag surf uh, That's pretty cool. TBA thing. I mean, there was at least 2,000, 3,000 people doing that. If not oh, more. It was more than that. Yeah. yeah. Was, if not more. It was most I mean, of the stadium. It looked yeah. like to me. <laughs> Like most of the lower bowl for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Most of the lower bowl for sure, which was insane. And I think uh, the players feed off that energy. And you can also just take it from like Tony V, what he was talking about. I mean, that guy knows sports and knows how fans can change the dynamic of games, especially in Lindsey Nelson with those legends uh, out there in right field. Um, it's it's crazy to, to get a place like that rocking. And I think that could – be be a little weird, and maybe some of these Pac-12 teams that didn't have to play in front of every, uh, anybody will be a little overconfident and get a little shaken up when there's a lot of fans in the arena going crazy. I don't know. We'll have to see. It's going to make we'll this March fun. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. More madness than ever. Yeah, more madness than ever. A lot of crazy stuff going on. A lot of crazy stuff going on in the NBA, too. That's yeah, what we want to hop about. into NBA a little bit. Yeah, we can talk a little NBA. Um, I mean, I've got the – well, why don't we do a quick power rankings visit here, and then I've also got uh, some mock drafts pulled up. Always excited to, to kind of look at those and starting okay, to yeah. get in on the We're early mock drafts. football season. mock drafts? No, uh, NBA mock drafts. Um, NBA mock drafts? Yes. Yeah, yeah I'm getting ready NFL for it. We're talking basketball. Closer. The NFL drafts. Wait, let's, let's pull up some – who are the Titans going to draft? Yeah, let's pull up some NFL mock drafts too. But let's, Truce, so we'll go into your your NBA, which yeah. you wanted to. We'll, so we'll, we'll cut. We'll swing back around to football later. Um, Grizzlies are obviously staying hot here. They're coming in at number two in the power rankings behind the Suns. Uh, Suns lost Chris Paul to injury, and probably he'll be out 
I think potentially even the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, they said six to eight weeks. Like yeah, so they could be without him. But Booker has – he's averaging like nine assists a game since Chris Paul has been out. So he's kind of been able to pick up that slack a little bit. But Phoenix did lose its first consecutive games um, since Chris Paul has been on the team. So, I mean, the Suns have been really good when Devin Booker and Chris Paul were paired up. We saw the beginning of that when Devin Booker was playing – out of his mind in the bubble. Um, but I think the Suns take a little dip. Grizz are playing well right now. Um, Curry has taken a little bit of a step back, but the Warriors haven't really. Uh, Draymond Green has been banged up, which is kind of been messing with the team chemistry a little bit. Um, who's and- uh, who's going who's gonna to be the two seed? Who's going to be uh, the two seed for the West Coast or West yeah. Western Conference? Yeah, um, gonna, how, how is that looking? Is so Phoenix right now one? it's Phoenix, um, Golden State, then Memphis, um, and I yeah. believe Memphis is only two and a half games back or one and a half games back, something like that. So I mean, it's it's a tight race here to the finish. Um, Phoenix definitely has a little bit of a lead, but I mean, really, if you get in those top top three spots, you got to be yeah. feeling pretty good. Um, but yeah, so we got the Grizzlies who are one and a half games behind the Warriors, actually, uh, seven and a half behind the Suns. Um, but the Eastern Conference is, I, I love the top four in the Eastern Conference right now Miami, yeah. Chicago, Philly, and Cleveland. Like that is such yeah. a fun, like, four <laughs> to, to have in there. It's also kind of bringing back some memories, uh, not quite Cleveland, but Chicago and Miami. Uh, dueling Derrick Rose and LeBron when he first got there. Those teams yeah. were two, two of the top teams in the Chicago, East. Chicago had a lot of good teams in there when LeBron was coming. He had some good – they had some good series. Yeah, maybe. well, they when beat was, him out for well, the one seed that and year. And I think even, even when he came to the Cavs the second time, I think it was yeah. – I think they – the series wasn't super it, close, but LeBron well, hit. It went six games or something like okay. that. Because I think Derrick Rose hit that crazy uh, backboard three game winner. and Yeah, and LeBron crazy- hit a corner three, like buzzer beater as yeah, well. Yeah, the Bulls definitely gave the Cavs uh, and LeBron in general with Miami too, just kind of trouble in the Eastern Conference. They, they yeah. Them and the Pacers in the, the first pa- half yeah, of the Pacers 2010s. Gave, gave the heat trouble. Yeah, they did. Pacers and Bulls, kind of that first five year stretch, um, were really the the only two teams that I felt like had a chance against those. They either never really LeBron. Did. The Pacers no, got them close one time. Yeah, Pacers, yeah, they took like, it seven took them, games. Yeah, but they didn't. They didn't win though. Yeah, I was gonna say Pacers, obviously not to the same level of success, but were almost bad boys esque. Yeah. Like, they, they Danny were kind Granger, of what the bad boys young were Paul to, George, to uh, Roy Hibbert. What happened to well, Roy Hibbert? Because that was when the whole he LeBron. Fell off so fast. Yeah. He fell so, off so fast, dude. That was when the whole LeBron flopping situation was going on. So you kind of had this kind of more. Yeah, Lance Stevenson was Lance blowing Stevenson, in his ear. I was going to say Lance yeah. Stevenson. Just guys yeah. that were ready to antagonize him. LeBron was getting so much hate there for a while. Like, it was hardcore when he went to Miami and lost that first time, dude. Everyone was giving him just the business. So much like crap. Everyone yeah. was giving him just dogging on him so bad. And I was down bad. I've always been a LeBron fan. Like I've always, I've always, <laughs> I've always cheered for LeBron. So I was, a, I was a Miami Heat bandwagon for sure. Oh yeah. And, uh, it was tough when they lost that finals because I was more like pissed because now LeBron's just going to get more hate and I'm like nah but then, then they took care of OKC in 2012 and the yeah. then he started being then the Spurs team. in 2013 we'll never forget that series uh, oh, obviously Ray crazy. Allen the shot and I, I think well, the, the Thunder one is the Thunder one is so overlooked too because at the time no one yeah. realized that the yeah Thunder who was actually, on that team yeah like you had three MVPs on that Thunder team and no one really even realized it yet yeah, that is wild. Three MVPs on that team. Yeah. And Harden, did he got moved after that season, right? He got traded uh, during that offseason, I believe. Yeah, maybe yeah, dur- either during that or during yeah. the season or something. Yeah. It, I, but it wasn't a big deal at the time. Like, I mean, yeah, I knew who James Harden was, but like. Yeah, I remember really. like it was like, oh, wow, James Harden got traded. Well, but went, it wasn't yeah. like a blockbuster craziness. Well, he went wanting to be the guy somewhere. Yeah. And it so he went to Houston. Well. And <laughs> I was. mean, they were, 
Houston was bad for a minute. Like when they had Kevin Martin and uh, uh, Chuck Hayes. Um, I mean, they had Chuck just, Hayes. Yeah, the six, six center. Luis Scola was in there for a little bit. Um, I mean, they had some crappy teams down there uh, in Houston. And James Harden really just kind of drug them out of the depths, got them contending in the West. Uh, and then obviously we've seen what has played out after that, a little bit of craziness. But yeah, James Harden kind of brought Houston back on the map after their down years, after they lost McGrady and Yao Ming and Stevie Franchise and some of those kind of early 2000s, mid 2000s guys that were were great for Houston. Um, they Those down years were not fun and Harden brought them back. So I'm sure Houston fans are appreciative, but... Uh, Got to be a little pissed at him now with the, the way things are shaping up. I think Houston might be uh, in last. Yeah, they're – oh, no, they're <laughs> one ahead of Orlando. So they're the – Oh, good. Yeah, they're uh, second to last in the NBA overall. Worst in the Western Conference at least. Oh, man. Houston's not – dude, they got – the Texans were terrible this year. The Rockets are terrible. Yeah. I mean, across the board, Houston. The Astros, I guess, are pretty good, but they yeah, cheated. but everybody so, like, hates the Astros. Yeah, yeah, everyone hates the Astros. That so is true. Even the irrelevant. team you're having success in, everybody hates you. <laughs> not a good time for Houston sports right now. No, not too much fun. I did see uh, a side by side, kind of sticking with our NBA theme, the other day, and it was comparing Derrick Rose and John Morant in their third years together. And I was thinking, you know what? That's actually kind of a good comparison. I will yeah. say, I think D- Derrick Rose, and you have to take some of this with a grain of salt because, you know, that that era of NBA, even though it was pretty recent, still it's a diff- little still different. different. It was before as, Steph Curry got to the league, and he really changed a lot. Just I mean, as far yeah. as scoring and everything, you have to take stats kind of into perspective because Derrick Rose was on – I mean, he's an another MVP. level. Like, yeah. Pe- people yeah. really forget how awesome Derrick Rose was before the whole knee injury yeah. happened. Yeah. But yeah. I, right. well, if John won an MVP, then you could really make that. Right. But I do like the comparison because it is kind of two guys. Similar play freak, styles. Athlete, freak athleticism. Yeah. I mean, John could win MVP. John oh, yeah, could, could win MVP next year. I mean, he could, he could win it this year legit. if they. Yeah. He, if he starts win. going off like crazy. I mean, I think. And Bede nah, is probably yeah, going to win one because he's he's he's, he's been, been around down. a little while too, yeah. you know. Like well, he's, he's so had a good healthy too, season. Yeah, I think that's what it is too. Yeah. So I think uh, no, nah, but and Ja has been Ja was out for a little bit. So yeah, he missed yeah. Uh, two or three weeks in the beginning of the season. Was banged so, up a little bit. But I'm um, just saying he's on that level. Like he he is. Yeah. I mean, he's an All Star game starter. Like he's yeah. I mean, he's a top so, top ten player in the league. For sure, I'd say at this point. And this year, you can put him closer to top five than top ten. I don't know if he quite That's cracks the top five yet, but, I mean, the uh, he, I think, scored, what was it, 40 points for the fourth or fifth time this season. Um, and no other Grizzlies right? player has done that more than once in a season. So, you, you can tell just by the franchise records he's breaking and what he's doing in Memphis. Yeah. He's that type of player. It's he's awesome. that dude. And he loves Memphis, dude. That's it's really awesome to see. Yeah, they've got uh, they've got such a young core. They're yeah. so good. They Their do. oldest They're player so is Stephen Adams, and he's like twenty eight. Yeah, I mean they don't have a single thirty year old on the team. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. So I mean this the, this Grizzlies team has a, a very bright future, and I think. If I remember correctly, I think Jaron Jackson Jr. is actually younger than John Morant. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. so, I mean, even and he, some of those crazy? other pieces like we built off of yeah, are young. They have very – they have great potential to be rock solid for a while. Well, yeah. obviously, they've been drafting well, too. Like, so. Yeah, the, yeah the exactly. Front that's what, doesn't, deserves that's a what really time. doesn't stop about good front offices. Like, you see that with the Titans like, and stuff, too. Like, having sustained success. Yeah, you draft good players and, like, you get good players. But then drafting the right ones to fill in behind, like, your stars is so important, too. Like, you've got to continue to just fill the roster with just great pieces. Because it takes everybody. I mean, the NBA roster is not that big. You need to you need to hit on all. <laughs> you need yeah. all these guys. So, well, it's like you're only getting two draft picks, you know. Yeah, yeah, you better hit on them. <laughs> yeah, but they've hit on a lot recently. 
I mean, Jared and Ja. I mean, think about think about really that draft with Ja and Zion. I'm like, yeah, Zion was the number one yeah, pick, but like, but, but, it, but cow, at the same it, time, you knew something like this was possible. We're like, he doesn't play. Like, he's, yeah, he's up. He's, he's essentially. He's honestly at this moment, I in my head, he's as close to not playing again in the NBA as he is to like being an MVP level, you know, center in the NBA. Like, I just don't. I, I don't know what's going on with him at all. And here you have Ja, who's the number two pick. Who, you know, well, he has a lot of regarded. he has a lot of issues. I mean, we CJ McCollum got traded to the Pelicans, yep. um, and Zion basically doesn't really talk to anyone in the locker room. He's not yeah. has no leadership, no team chemistry. It seems like he already wants out of there. So I, I mean, to like the Grizzlies, a... how they got to the second draft pick when they, I believe. Should have yeah. been number 13. I mean, yeah, how we barely that in the has played out is – it's, and I'm glad we didn't even get the number one pick because you know yeah, the Grizzlies would have taken Zion. I mean, we, any person would have taken Zion. Um, so it's crazy how, it's, how this has played out. Yeah. Zion to me kind of seems like – I mean, obviously not on the court, but as kind of a teammate in, in, the, in the stuff outside of games, it just kind of seems like he's got a little bit of a beta personality almost where he's just – like you said, he doesn't really talk to his teammates. He doesn't want to socialize or – I mean, and that, that kills you. Like you have to have good team chemistry and everything, obviously. So – he, yeah, I agree with you, Trish. I think Zion. I don't know if he's got some mental stuff well, he's dealing with, but he's just kind of an odd egg for sure. You know, he he's basically ballooned up to three hundred and thirty pounds too. He's completely out of shape and overweight. What's well, the, he did that right recent, when he came in. Have the we league. seen him recently? Like, where, uh, has I mean, he's even injured. seen him like playing basketball in the last. I think he's practicing somewhere else or training somewhere else. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the thing. Like, isn't that so weird? Yeah. So. Uh, he's not expected to be back, let's see, um, for foreseeable future. Uh, this was uh, came out about 10 days ago um, that he will rehab away from the team. So that includes all uh, rehab, not just training or just uh, anything. He's just complete rehab away from the team. And I, I would think if you were – Wanting to be successful when you come back, you'd be wanting to talk to the players that are on the team when you get back. So to me, this almost seems like Zion is checking out, whether it be the NBA or the Pelicans, we'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, I'm excited for this these kind of Eastern Conference playoffs, though. I, haven't, I really haven't kept up with the NBA a lot this year. I don't know what it is, but NBA playoffs, always fun. And that, that whole East with it being all up in the air and – some yeah. teams that haven't been super successful recently being up in there. That's going to be fun to watch for sure. I'm excited to watch, obviously, like Darius. Yeah, that's what I was uh, going to say. Cleveland, I'm for the Cavs. And the Bulls, too, man. I'm I'm excited to watch the Bulls play. Yeah, we've got a like lot Chicago, of – Chicago, I like uh, – yeah, I like any of those teams. So it'll just be fun. Playoff basketball is so fun. Yeah. Um, NBA is – NBA playoff. Oh, great. my gosh. I didn't even get a chance to look at John Morant's stat line tonight yet. So it's halftime against the Spurs. He has 29. Nice. 12 for 15. Gosh. That's that's crazy. That 29 kind of at half. Too. Dude's going to go for another 40-point game. Rack him up. If he went on a roll like that, he might get into the – Yeah, I mean, he would basically – maybe that's what he's doing. He's pissed that he's not uh, kind of made that jump to the MVP front runner yet, so he's just going to start going off for 50, 60-point games. And if the Grizzlies don't lose, you got to give it to him. I'm looking at some of these, if you want to transition into kind of some NFL mock drafts. Yeah, draft. I was looking at some mock drafts too. Here I've, I've only looked at a couple, but it's interesting. The two I've looked at have been the Pro Football Focus and then CBS, and both of them pretty similar in the top ten have mainly edge rushers, offensive linemen going. Uh, but both of them, for the first quarterback taken, have Malik Willis actually being yeah. the first quarterback taken that well, I've looked at. And I saw somewhere Matt Corral isn't going to throw at the combine or something. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, so there was some kind of weird thing about him that he's not going to – nobody's really going to see him throw again until he gets drafted. Is he fully um, healthy? I, I don't believe so. I think that has something to do with it uh, with some rehab there. But, I mean, I just don't trust any of the quarterbacks. Oh, wow. So this is PFF. They have 
the Detroit Lions drafting QB Sam Howell from North Carolina at 32. What do we think about that? The quarterback draft is bad this year. I mean, that that's the thing. I'm looking and uh, the ones I've looked at, some Sam of them Sam Howell have, is not an NFL quarterback. I, prom- I, almost, I promise you. Yeah. I don't know if any of them are. Yeah. I mean, I, I can, don't know if any I of them are starters. Sure. Yeah. Like, I could see Sam Howell. Yeah, I mean, I could see all of them being on a roster for their career, but I couldn't – I don't think I can literally see any of them being consistent starters. No, none of, the, none of those guys are your franchise quarterbacks. I'm, I'm, I'm just serious. Like, I, I don't think any of those guys – some of them may even go in the start a little bit, but, like, they're right. just not the guy you're going to anchor your franchise to for 10-plus years. <laughs> I wouldn't – That's. That's what you really want to find. That's what everyone's trying to find, right? The franchise. Yeah, player. and it's so hard to find. It's I mean, so it's, hard to find. it's easier said than done. You, you got to take some shots at some point. I think if yeah. you are really in need for a quarterback, honestly, I think you just play the long game. I'm not, I don't want to waste a first round pick on a guy if they're not going to be my starter for the next 10 years, you know? Yeah. Or if I don't think that, at least, if I don't think they have, like, I, I would draft another player that you, think is going to be a long-term guy and then find kind of a journeyman quarterback to get you through the year and then wait again for the next draft class. I just don't think any of these guys are worth a first round pick. And a lot of these mock drafts, a couple of them only have, you know, two quarterbacks going yeah, in the first round. That's what I'm saying too. But then others, others have all of them going. So it'll be interesting to see who gets picked and who doesn't. Cause earlier I felt like I wasn't seeing Malik Willis a lot in the first round on some of these, but now yeah, he's picked it back up. He's got one. a little steam going again. He um, got a lot of hype from the Senior Bowl, I think. I think he really showed out there. Senior Bowl is always fun. I, uh, I'm i always a big fan of taking offensive linemen early. I like I like building around the offensive line. Um, and, I mean, you, you look at PFF here. They've got uh, Evan Neal out of Alabama, offensive tackle, going all the way up to number three. Uh, from the Texans. So maybe the Texans are locking in Davis Mills as the quarterback of the future, and they need to go get him a left tackle. I mean, I the, hope so. I the, hope they lock the in franchi- Davis Mills the, as the franchise. I know the um, office, the front office likes him. I mean, he played for the situation he was put in, he definitely didn't play too bad. I'm not. Yeah, I'm, no, he didn't. He didn't play. I mean, he's still just. I'll take my chances of Titans playing twice a year. I'll say that. Oh yeah, no, I'd be I'd be happy if the Houston Te- Houston Texans starting quarterback for the next eight years is Davis Mills. I'd bet that'd probably work out in the Titans' future. I mean, because we were looking like it was going to be Deshaun, and I mean Deshaun is a great quarterback. He's yeah, to play again he's so twice good. A year. But uh, I wonder which team like is just going to bite the uh, bullet and go after him. What that is a crazy situation. Someone's got that is the true. Like that's a true wild card. That's a true franchise quarterback there that's just sitting there that has has some problems, yes, but like obviously well, it's he's not, not even in jail or I anything. I mean, franchise talk about I mean MVP level quarterback. Yeah. I mean he yeah. got him to the AFC championship, uh or ex- excuse me, almost got him to the AFC championship uh against the Chiefs. Weren't they up four or two touchdowns? They were up twenty four yeah. oh. That actually is yeah. a choke job. Like yeah, was, that was a total no choke. Job. 24-3, maybe. It might have been 24-3. Yeah, that still, sounds But right. still, I mean, that's <laughs> such a big lead. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the the two I've looked at, too. I've been looking at who the, they have the Titans picking. PFF, I think, had them going after N'Kobe Dean, the linebacker from Georgia. And then I CBS, like I actually I – like, I like this, too. They have – I'm going to butcher this last name. I've seen him before, but I think it's Daniel Falele. Out of Minnesota, the 6'9", 380-pounder. Good Lord. Well, and he's not just – I mean, he, I think he ran in a touchdown in the bowl game. That was kind of his big play. But That would be crazy if the Titans drafted him in the first round. He looks like he, – he looks athletic, too. That's kind of the – He's 380? 387. What? <laughs> Look him up, man. Impossible. And he's not just – He's not just some big fat guy. He just looks like a giant. That's crazy. I, I'd be okay with that, honestly. What's but, his I name? Mean, Daniel Faalele. It's F A A L E L E. I'd seen him before. I mean, I'd, I've watched him before. Is I mean, the guy's 40? huge. 
Oh my gosh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we need to six, see six nine three eighty out of Melbourne, Australia. Yeah, he went to Minnesota. Yeah, he's uh, he's Australian. A freak. He's massive. So he was six nine, and he never. I'm only reading the headlines. This was from 2017. Six nine football player who's never played. <laughs> And now, yeah, I mean, he's his senior season, he started 12 or 13 games at right tackle. Um, and I mean, Minnesota had a pretty decent, yeah, we need to get rid of offense. Juan. I, I'll draft a tackle, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting rid of actually, maybe move him to the other side. Saffold, it's That's looking like else. Saffold might retire, and then, um, Saffold the, retire? I feel like he's still no, good. he well, he might, All he's been team. talking about it, and there's a lot of kind of question. Surrounding if they don't, I, I bet this year might be his last year. One last hope. ride to the Super Bowl, Saffold. You still got some good ball left in you. He's I think that's what he wants to do. I think he wants to hope they get a Super Bowl this next year and then he can retire. He's gonna, he's gonna road grade for Derrick Henry to get like 2,800 yards rushing. Yeah, and that'd be awesome. Super Bowl, and then he can retire. Another one like I wouldn't hate 600 though. carries. I would love if the Titans got a. Jamison Williams. Yeah, I was thinking yeah, about Jamison awesome. Williams. I think I mean, you need to take another receiver. Well, it's like that's one thing we don't. We I mean, definitely need another receiver for sure. Don't, yeah, don't Julio's going to be gone. Um, NWI is not the answer at number two or three. Well, so. well, and Jamison, dude, Jamison is a burner, and that's something we've. I can't remember the last time the Titans have had a burner at wide receiver, yeah. just like such a straight speed guy. I mean, AJ Brown is great at everything, right? But just like he's no. more of a physical guy, I think, really. Yeah. Than, yeah. But he turns on the Jets. I right? mean, he does. Don't get me wrong. Game. He's fast. But, <laughs> Don't get me uh, wrong. He can fly. Yeah. But, but I, I but feel like Kyrie people Kill appreciate AJ Brown physicality more. But yes, Will, you're right. Yeah, go ahead. I was just, yeah, just to have kind of that Tyreek Hill type guy, just a guy who is going to outrun. I mean, when he caught that touchdown in the SEC championship where he just looked like he hit another gear. And yeah. left everyone in the dust. I was like, that's speed that's a different level. Yeah. I mean, are you a little worried about the, the ACL in any way? Or, I mean, you, you look at Jeffrey Simmons and you look at some of those other guys that the Titans have drafted uh, that had some injuries. Um, right. See, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. You can look at that. And then obviously the Titans seem like they do okay with that. Um, so if they, I mean, if they examine it, I trust the Titans front office to make the right call on it. Yeah. So if they, if they draft them, I trust it. But then also, You've got some wide receivers you can go after because this CBS has Chris Olave as the last pick in the first round. So Dang. he could be there. Yeah, I mean, there, there could be. A, I would love them taking best receiver available, like whatever it I is. I would too. I, I think that would be because even if you have Julio, even if you have Julio back, it's, he's going to do what he did last year and miss quite a few regular season games. Like there's a good just, chance. It, yeah. Yeah. His well, hamstrings, like, even, like even so, after them, you have. Uh, Westbrook Akine, but I mean, yeah, that's I, what I'm saying. We don't have anyone after them anyway. Yeah, and you Cody really Hollister. need a number two receiver. What is what you really need? You need a, a you have your A one receiver, which is awesome. Like having a AJ Brown is great. Now you you need a number two uh, because yeah. even if you have Julio, he's just Julio. Who forget that Julio almost exists. We need an Adam receiver. Thielen to our Justin Jefferson. I feel like yeah. that that yeah. Vikings passing yeah, offense Cup. is so nasty. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather take Cooper Cup, Super Bowl MVP. Dude's uh, amazing. Um, think about if we did have, like, a Cooper Cup. Think if we had, like, a Debo Samuel-type player, like, in our roster. That'd be so that, awesome. That would, I think that could have, like, jettisoned the Tannehill offense so much. Um, yeah, what well, still could. I mean, we still like, – Yeah. <laughs> still – Build the offense. I mean, if you put someone, a playmaker of that type, like I, I'm not, you're not going to find Demo Samuels don't go on trees. But if you could play a, you know, someone in that vein of like what they do is make plays with their legs and, and all and all over the field, just being fast, <laughs> just to add a super fast guy to Henry AJ Brown. I mean, you're be good. got a good running back. I mean, last year you did solidify the backup running back position, like having. Having those guys behind Henry, obviously they look like they can, you know, they can carry the load pretty good. Um, offensive line and wide receiver, that'd be my main two things. On yeah, the, uh, agreed. On the offensive side, for sure. Defense is pretty – I mean, I'm pretty happy with our defense right now. I'm pretty our, content. Our defense is good. Linebacker is always good. I mean, 
it's the D D line looks pretty solid right now. Yeah, um, I, I mean, can even go for like a, some safety, like but maybe they've been really good at finding good options late in the draft. Yeah, like just at, you know maybe just get some depth. Linebacker, I'm always down to add more guys. We are getting a little older, some of those guys. Yeah. Like, Jayon doesn't Hamill seem to be a factor older. as much as he was. David Long, uh, once he gets healthy, he's going to be nice. David Long's have. good. David Long is one you to pair with. So Yeah. So, yeah. we'll see. Who knows how long Cunningham, like, will be around. Yeah. I mean, he's I playing at a elite level year. right now. Yeah, I think, from what I've heard, Cunningham is going to be back. So, that'll be kind of like the Like, Rashawn Evans, like, how, is he going to be around again? Uh, so that's I've, what uh, the whole the that's why the, PFF had Nicobe Dean because yeah. I think in Rashawn and Jayon are probably I'd out. Take, I'd take that. I would take adding, letting them go and adding. Yeah. Like, I mean, Rashawn's been like decent in our defense for a long time, which is a testament. You know, <laughs> it's been like yeah, yeah, kind of, I don't he, know. He, he came first back round a little pick, bit. Though. I felt like yeah, he did have a resurgence, but I mean, he had some just boneheaded plays too, where he, yeah, I mean, that. he just would well, run through the gap okay. and. I said he's yeah. okay. That was a pretty compliment. He's been mediocre. Yeah. Not at best. He's been he's been good. He's done good things, but he's just not like well, but I feel like I hate to say replaceable, like, but he's replaced like you can find another pretty good linebacker. That's, yeah, at a cheaper option because I mean yeah. somebody's gonna he's off his rookie contract this year. So yeah. right. Yeah. I feel like Jayon really fell off for me anyway. Like I'd be yeah, that injury if, got if him pretty to, good, I think. If they wanted to split, I think I'd definitely take Rashawn. But I mean, do you? I don't know how. I don't know how expensive Rashawn will be because I don't think he's done enough to garner a a huge contract from somewhere else. So maybe test the waters and see what it's like out there. I, I could see them resigning uh, Rashawn, and I, I could see. I, I don't know. We'll we'll see how they draft and and everything. But I'm sure they have a better plan than the three of us. But mm-hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't hate trying to upgrade at that position. I'll say that. Yeah, I mean, uh, in, and I think you're right there, Seth, with trust in the front office. I mean, Amy Adams, Strunk, J. Rob, Mike Rabel, we've got a pretty damn good uh, organization. I think we need to shout them out a little bit more here. Shout uh, out, hey man, where, 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 we shout them out. We yeah. give them a lot of love. We give Amy a lot of love. A- 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 <laughs> I, I just, I love giving Amy love. She's one of the best owners in all of the NFL. So I, I, the more the merrier with uh, Amy Adams, Strunk. I get fired up and I love when she's out there signing posters and doing stuff pregame. Like she's, she's a very active owner too. Very active with the players and uh, the organization. She's not too old yet. So she's young around the team, man. We just got a bright future in Tennessee. A a lot to be excited about. Dude, that's That's what I need. I need a, I need a Titans helmet signed by Amy. People walk in like, Oh, who's, who signed that helmet? Oh, Amy signed the dude. Yeah. Like what? I'd like to be friends with her, just like hang out. Yeah, it, I feel like she'd be a great conversationalist. Oh yeah, I'd like to like I'd like to get coffee with her like once a week, just like chill with Amy. Yeah, just chat. She, she's probably her. a pretty b- busy lady though. I don't know if she could squeeze. Well, that's that in why I'll do one coffee. I mean, one I'll, coffee a yeah. week. She can squeeze that in. Yeah, she can squeeze just that. A short in. little, a short little coffee chat. You know, why don't we send that's a, that's uh, Amy Adams Strunk uh, a, a paid her letter? See if she'll come on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, dude, uh, we we might be able to pull that off. I feel like that's kind of the in between, in between area where maybe we could pull something crazy like that off to get Amy Adams. A nice heartfelt letter. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like owners don't get that type of love, like coaches and GMs. I I, they kind of do from some of the people, but owners and especially in a area like Nashville, uh, a woman owner who probably doesn't get as much love. Um, unfortunately, because of that reason, as she's not quite as famous as Bud Adams, of course, and that kind of whole crew. But um, I think Amy Adams, man, we might be able to convince her. We'll have to start drafting up a letter here. We yeah, get her on here. Nice. A little put gift her basket. Seat. What's she going to turn down and get a little gift basket? Yeah. Can't turn it down. No, I think, nice. uh, like I think that's right now. Just send her, send her over some homemade chocolate chips and a little note. There's no way she doesn't say yes. No way. I will say we got to get – we're going to need to contact Shump to get him on here right before the uh, SEC tourney. Yeah, we definitely – uh, we want to maybe I next guess. week. <sighs> yeah, probably next week. So a little uh, foreshadowing for you pay herders that uh, stayed on to the end here to, to maybe hear about uh, <laughs> next week's episode. Yeah, hey, Benny wanted to come out and do a March Madness preview. Okay, yeah, yeah we can do that too. The, sure. ba- the Batistas. 
Could have Dude, I got a little se- I got a little uh, improv segment we could do. What's a just real quick, pretty c- common conversationalist question? Give me a give me a show you've been binging or really into lately. Maybe for the listeners, maybe show recommendations, whatever it be, Netflix, HBO. Hmm, I kind of like this whatever. little spin here. Um, I mean, for me, it's Righteous Gemstones on <laughs> I was HBO. Say, dude, I'm probably about to go watch that tonight. I'm yeah. about to watch the season for I haven't. I've missed the past uh, couple of episodes, so don't spoil it for me. But the I feel like the season one has been – was definitely better than season two, yeah, at least I, from I what I've seen. That. I haven't seen the kind of second half of the season It's pretty season funny, two. though. Like the, it's, it's still it's funny, show. but season one was, like, really, really good, I felt like. And yeah. – um, it's just kind of one of those got some dumb humor in it that gets a little over the top sometimes, but it's also got some kind of witty humor that surprises you a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and, and I like the way they play it. And it, it's just a very Southern atmosphere too throughout the show. And that's kind of like a big thing that I think is funny and uh, just how they play all that stuff. So righteous gemstones would be uh, my go-to right now. Dude. I love, I love Danny McBride too. Yeah, Danny McBride's so funny. I'd watch him about anything. Yeah. Truly. Uh, I've been watching the. Uh, you've been watching those Kanye documentaries that's come out on. Uh, I watched the. I watched the first episode. I'm about to go watch the second. Yeah, they're right good. Now. I like them. I watched the that first two. Really I guess the third one is coming out soon, or not already. I don't think it's out yet. But there, it's good. It's an interesting look into an artist that I only know as like an older, in, influential artist. Uh, it's fun to see kind of someone with that much determination from a young age, uh, and see some of that of before they made it like them still just knowing like i don't know them still just grinding and working hard at his craft it's pretty cool well and a a journey like his you know it's it's awesome to watch because we'll never artists today don't really have to deal with what he dealt with like kanye he even had the connections like he was making beats for all these guys he was working with jay-z yeah he showed up as a kid with a backpack on playing beats for jay-z and it was still hard for him to get like be able to put music out like we, we don't yeah, have yeah. that issue anymore artists can put out music sound or whatever and if it, yeah and if it hits it yeah hits. so the crazy thing is kanye was massive then and he probably would have even been bigger from a younger age like earlier had it been yeah. in like yeah. more this modern time like if kanye was putting out the beats he was putting out consistently like in real time on like soundcloud or like just yeah. like dropping them like it would have been crazy like people would have been I don't know. Just like it, it is interesting, but uh, but yeah, to see him on the come up has been. Uh, I, I like that. I don't watch a ton of TV. I've been watching. I watch Jim Sims a little bit. I mostly watch like <laughs> like a basketball game or something. Yeah, night. that's pretty. Yeah. Much. And I go to bed so early. Yo, I go to bed like ten o'clock. I'm like out. So, Good for you, honestly. So, yeah, well, I, getting that so, healthy sleep I, in. I don't. I could uh, use that a little bit more. Yeah. I do. I I do try to make it a pretty good priority to get real healthy sleep. But I, I try to go hard so I'm tired and go to bed. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. want to go hard. So then you're worn out and it's easy to fall right asleep. Yeah. Especially, like, if I if I do a good run, like, I'm probably going to sleep good. I know. Yeah. Anyway, um, there, I watch, like, I like HBO because I like uh, – I like Curb Your Enthusiasm. I thought yeah, that's Curb's great. I've been like watching Curb, sure. yeah. Dude, I think Larry David's just so funny. I love Seinfeld, too. I mean, yeah. that's such a great show. Larry David uh, is such a funny guy in general. So that's kind of that's kind of stuff I like to watch. What about you, Will? Yeah, Will. Dude, so I've got ESPN Plus, which honestly is probably, I think for the money, is my favorite streaming platform now. Because what is it like four bucks it's or six, five? I bucks? think it's six bucks now or something a month. So nothing too bad. Nothing you even really notice. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I've been binging all the Ultimate Fighter seasons. Oh so I'm yeah, on like, I'm on like season six, and it's awesome because there's some famous I've, dudes early oh, on. Oh yeah, too. oh yeah. Well, and I just recently kind of have been getting into the UFC. Um, but yeah, I watched that first season. The first season's got Forrest Griffin on it. You know, guys that I used to, I on the UFC video game I used to play when I was a kid was hopping up. Yeah, they had they were producing big name guys. Rashad yeah, Evans Stipe Miocic. Yeah, uh, 
Matt Sarah went on and then won the belt right after he was on it. Uh, and then all the coaches, obviously, you got guys like Chuck Liddell, Randy Couture, all those guys. Yeah, the legends. Well, and then I actually watched. I had never watched. So the good thing about ESPN Plus as well is they have every 30 for 30 ever. So sometimes I'll just sit down and pick a 30 for 30. I haven't seen them watch it. And they did a Chuck and Tito. Oh, that's pretty 30. cool. Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz. And on it, Dana White talks about how you know, the show, The Ultimate Fighter, brought in a ton of – I mean, that that's what kind of made the UFC as big as it yeah. was because UFC is obviously – I mean, it's pretty much strictly pay-per-view up to that point. It still is mainly pay-per-view, right? So well, by creating, now. Yeah, by creating The Ultimate Fighter back then and giving people a cable TV show to be exposed to what the UFC is brought in all these viewers and everything. But anyway, I mean, honestly, it's just fun because they stick – it's a mixture of, I mean, it is a reality show, obviously, but it's also, I mean, they stick 16 fighters in a house yeah, living together. Like, yeah, there, then, there's some crazy moments for sure. When oh, yeah. They, like, and just, just, they're every, all fired up, testosterone flying off the yeah. walls. You know, these guys. Well, it's are, like they don't get their phones. They don't get to see any girls. So they're just going crazy. And every year they just trash the house at some point, especially because you get eliminated as the show goes on. But in the later seasons, or not the later seasons, but in most of them, you uh, you stay in the house even if you get eliminated. So you have these guys, maybe they're still training, but then when they know they're not going to fight anymore, all these guys are like partying while all these other guys are trying to sleep and have a fight to prepare for the next day that could change their lives. <laughs> so, yeah, that's been good. And then obviously me and the wife watched uh, Love is Blind season two. Nice. Was- Honestly, I watched the first season. I thought the first season was awesome. The season wasn't as good, but stuff like that, yeah, it's kind of girly, but, man, it is entertaining. And it's hilarious to watch. I mean, no offense to these people, but basically you see – you stick all these people together that I guess are not good in relationships and all they want to do is get married. And they'll, they'll get well. They get matched with these people, and it's like you don't me- you don't mesh together at all. But you both want to get married so bad, you're just going to do it, which happens yeah. like half the time. A lot of them say, like end up saying no, but a lot of them say yes, and you're like, man, you have a problem. Like you don't need to get <laughs> yeah. married that bad, man. No, I like, saw you're going to be in a terrible relationship. I was watching it with my sister um, a few weeks ago when I was down in Aiken, staying in the dorm. And that show is just. Stayed at the dorm. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) I did. I did. I stayed in the athletic dorm. I wasn't paying paying money. It's a co-ed. I mean, all the athletes live there, and um, so yeah, I just uh, walked right in, had a nice little spot on the couch, uh, watched uh, Love Is Blind with Emily. Nice. Yeah, it was a homecoming weekend, so I think Delaney and some of her friends went out, but Emily was not really feeling it, so she stayed in. We watched Love Is Blind. It was. Uh, it definitely was more entertaining than I thought it would be. I, oh I no, man! Admit. It's if you really. I mean, it's, I just. It can be funny. It. Yeah, that's the thing. If you go into, it, I feel like most people go in thinking it's kind of funny, and that's the thing. Yeah, and it's like, okay, I'm going in to just watch some stupid TV. It's not like I think this is like real or, like, just a lot of the stuff is over the top stupid. And I think uh, like the one guy I was watching, I think his name was like Shane or something. The blonde dude, do yeah. you know who I'm talking about? Well, yeah, that guy is just a moron. Like he, the whatever yeah, but episodes I, I saw, uh, yeah, I thought he was goofy. I thought he was like the coolest guy though. He was just a goober. He said he yeah, wanted that a, is true. He said he wanted an old fashioned fountain and like cheese curds at the wedding. Like, and then apparently someone came out. Madison obviously is all in on the, you know, the out the what am i thinking the inside info from producers she's searching all this stuff you don't get to see on the show you know trying to catch the dirt or whatever and apparently he was like coked up the whole time he was on that show and it i mean makes I, a lot of sense I, I when believe you watch it. it yeah the dude is like <laughs> dude, this is your off the wall kind of crazy talk and always super hyped up so i could see it but yeah that'd be a, a good one for kind of maybe like you and the girlfriend or you and the wife to to start watching uh, you paid earners out there. It's uh, not 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 too bad. It's and uh, that's coming from someone who does not like reality TV or kind of any of those kind of more mushy gushy shows or whatever. I was slightly entertained. Wow, slightly entertained. What high praise! 
Yeah, no, they, that's a that's a big win for a show like this out of me. Yeah, no, I, I, I actually. Oh yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. That's what I don't watch a lot of trash TV. I don't know if I would watch it or not. Like if if Madison didn't watch it, if we didn't like watch it together, yeah, I don't know. I, if I, would I don't think it. I'm going out watch it myself. But if there is but one I show that it. you get roped into to to watch yeah. with or something fun to do with somebody else, your significant other, Love Is Blind, I'll recommend that one. <laughs> I like it. Real quick, uh, we didn't really talk about it, but as we kind of wrap things up, Preds Stadium Series this yeah, past the, weekend, the Winter Classic looked yeah, cool, they, but they lost. So yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. still got a catfish on the ice. Did you see that guy who? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Uh, Dodge security because it was in Nissan Stadium, obviously, so the fans were a lot further than normal uh, from the ice rink. But it did uh, look cool. That looked awesome. It did. It did, and I saw a lot of Snapchat stories and social media stuff of people right up uh, in Nissan Stadium. I think it's cool and a, a fun event to go to, but uh, as someone who would actually want to go and watch the Preds, I mean, it's terrible in terms of viewership, I would think. Like, while, while you're there, yeah, I, I mean, know. you can't it really see optics. anything. It'd be like the game at Bristol. Like, could you actually see, like, I mean, the you could, you could see, though. I mean, like, I wasn't just watching the Jumbotron. I was watching the field. Yeah. So I don't know how. I mean, but I think it'd be I, similar to that in my opinion. right. Yeah. Right. Because it's but, not the stadium's not as big, but the rink is smaller. So I don't yeah. know. It'd be cool. I mean, they got good. I'm sure it was a good experience. Like I bet that was really really fun. That's cool. That they oh brought yeah. That to it had to be cool. I'm glad our jerseys were terrible, dude. They 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 were so bad. Dude, they looked like what? They looked like a Walmart knockoff jersey. A jersey. Like an yeah. Well, not even that. Just like sometimes you'll go to Walmart or Sam's or Costco, and they'll have, they'll just make different kind of Preds jerseys or something. That's what it looked like. Yeah, it was that not they just good. made one. No, it was like, and the Tampa Bay, the Bolts one looked so cool, and then ours looked so lame. They should have just remade the black and blue jerseys. Those were exactly, sick. dude. Those That's were all awesome. you had to do. Those were awesome. You could have given me that exact jersey, and I've been like, yeah, it's yeah, perfect. Oh. Yeah, the winter, the winter classic jerseys last year were cool. Yeah, they were good. Just kind yeah. of like a like an old old timey look almost. I don't even know how to describe it. Kind of a just, classic look. Nashville should have been hosting an AFC Championship this year. That's what it was really yeah. missing. Like stadium series, that's cool, but AFC Championship that is amazing. Yeah, it's okay. We'll host it in the new Coliseum. I love I can't it. Wait. Did we get in? We go to a dome, dude. If we go to a dome, I'm gonna be so mad. Like a true dome, I'll be pissed. Retractable, real grass. I think that's the best. Real grass. I'll give it a chance. I'll give it a chance. I'll go see it in person to see if I approve. But if we go dome and turf, I'm done. I actually done. Unless we go true astroturf. Back to like the seven, like back yeah, to like the 60s or something. Yeah, then, where you're, you're seeing all I'm the back black in. beads firing up behind no, you. No, I want, yeah, I want, I want it to look like concrete out there. Like, yeah, I, to, I like that. I like they got to wear turf shoes, the carpet. Yeah, you got to wear turf shoes. Now, then I'm back in. So, we'll did see. we get any more? Do we, do they have any? specifics laid out yet for that or is it all just still talking? Nah, it's I mean, around yeah it's a, it's just there a lot of are some specifics somewhere but we ain't yeah no nothing that the public has access to but definitely that's why i need are, to go to coffee rolling. with team mom amy that's why i need mm -hmm. to go to yeah. coffee with her once a week to just she would definitely her. have some updates Man, now, that would if be i see if her could, uh, i'm asking her. if i ever run into her i'm asking her we need that. We need some inside information. Throw it out here. That would boost the viewership a lot, I'm sure. We need to figure out what she does, like, in her free time and just start doing it as well. Yeah, you know, she's running around Nashville. You get, she's you definitely got, like, her. she's definitely in, like, a Pilates class or, like, in, like, a some kind of We just need to, we all need to wear pay dirt shirts and just keep, like, bumping into her randomly. And then she's going <laughs> to, like... Who are all these like pay dirt sports fans that I keep seeing? We'll have to send our friends, like send everybody over. And she's just gonna think there's this massive pay dirt army in Nashville. Um, and then we could even, I mean, I'm thinking way ahead, but we could even put a charity event together with the Titans and do a whole uh, <laughs> uh Christmas pay dirt, Amy Adams Strunk, Christmas Miracle, Music City Miracle charity drive. Um, I'm I might start uh getting some things together to pitch to Amy after uh the first part of my plan works and we corrupt her mind into thinking that there are way more pay dirt fans out there than there are. 
Yeah. Man, she's definitely like grabbing dinner at Bellmead Country Club once a week or something. Oh, we gotta there's find definitely out. a spot. No, no, there's a spot yeah. that she is frequenting that we could just suddenly always be at. Yeah. But that's kind of natural, I guess. It just depends on who you're trying to find. Yeah. Yeah. But that's I want to see Amy. We'll I want to see Amy too. <laughs> All right, I think that about I think that about does it for us, guys. You got anything else you want to add in? No, I'm good. Good to go. All right, go well, out. guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks again for listening. Remember, uh, this is Paydirt Sports. You can find us on Twitter at Paydirt underscore Sports on Instagram at Paydirt Sports. We are part of the Six Pack Coverage Network. Check them out on SixPackCoverage.com. Be sure to uh, watch us on. Uh, obviously, we're we're available on pretty much anywhere you get your podcast. But be sure to check out. Uh, check us out on the six pack coverage youtube channel as well uh go over to their page check out their website sixpackcoverage.com they got fitness travel food sports obviously anything you can ask for they've got it guys thanks again for listening and we will see you all next week later out <laughs>